because there was always a question of, well, you, Filipinos are just niche. It's a small community. No, we're not. We're the third biggest, you know, uh, Asian group in, in, in America. We're making noise. We pack arenas for Joe Coy and Bruno Mars. We voted for Jessica Sanchez on American Idol. So what does that look like moving forward? Roslyn, I know you're one busy lady, so I am grateful that you made time to talk to us here on the show. Oh, it's an honor. I know we've been trying to do this for a long time, so I've always wanted to be on the show. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Shout out to Jer, um, to PR, of course, for making this happen. Roslyn, I know you've been very active in networking, connecting people, connecting talent, and really promoting our community. Why is it important for Filipinos to support fellow Filipinos? And in what ways can we continue to do this, especially now when uh, we are living in a day and age of globalization and inclusion? We've been a community that's been working separate and, and silo. But what I've seen in COVID, everybody coming together, especially during Filipino American History Month, imagine all of those events, Undiscovered, FPAC, everything happening at the same time, but now digitally and bringing our audience together. Why it's important for us to come together and support one another, especially for those of you like yourself that are professionals in the industry, is because we're the gateway. You know, there's always uh, a Filipino in every entertainment company, every marketing agency, advertising agency. And it's going to take us to open the door or talk to our bosses or our companies, especially um, those that are mainstream companies of this new talent, of this new film, etc., to to speak about it in a passion that others might not understand. Back in the day when I was at MySpace.com, you know, a friend named Jonah introduced me to Bruno Mars, his music and his songwriting. He, has, he wasn't signed yet. And she mentioned he was Filipino and he was so talented. I heard the music because I'm, I'm, I'm a Filipina as well, was so proud, brought him into the office. And then the next day we featured him on the homepage of myspace.com. You know, there was 200 million users at the, at the time, the number one website in the world. But had I not given him a chance, and there were probably a lot of outlets that looked at his picture or read his bio, you know, and, and didn't take that chance. But, I, but that's why it's important for Filipinos to support one another, especially other professionals um, that are working within it. And you're right about that, um, Roslyn. But the standard for a community, um, I guess it, it goes the same for other ethnic communities, is yeah. to be recognized mainstream. Yeah. Why do you think that is? And is that good or bad? I just feel like a lot of the times there are Filipinos amongst our mids that are really talented, uh, really should be promoted. Uh, they're, they're people that we should embrace and we should support. But I have seen this through the years, um, even with my old program, that um, we don't really recognize or we don't really give them our full 100% 100, uh, 100 support unless they're recognized by mainstream first. Mm -hmm. Is that good or bad? Yeah, I mean, it, it is good and it's bad, right? So the bad that, the, well, let's we'll talk about the good first. The good is always, like, always better. It's great to strive for mainstream success. We want everybody to enjoy our talent on the world stage. That's why I joined ABS-CBN personally is to help bring talent, content, and events to the world stage and meaning that we're side by side with the best because our talent is the best of the best, right? So we want to be at the Oscars, the Grammys, and that just adds a, a credibility to what we're already creating. And it's not just because we're not good just because we're Filipino. We're really, the talent is good that happens to be Filipino, right? So it's great to strive for that success. Mm -hmm. The challenge is, you know, especially for ethnic communities, especially for the Filipino community, we're really restricted in terms of opportunities, what platforms will, will feature us. You know, and I learned this when I worked on Inigo Pascual and Kiana V helping promote them. There aren't a lot of um, platforms that will take the chance for, you know, artists that aren't from, from America, number one. There's always like a, um, a stigma that comes where a re-education, you know, is, is the music in English? Is it too niche? Is it marketable? Um, but, 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 but thirdly, um, you know, in, in realistic comparison, when it comes to reaching the mainstream, you have mainstream companies that have huge funding, corporations and sponsors that are behind that. So for us to compete in the level of a mainstream um, artist or talent, we're going to have to need that mainstream support. So just talking about artists and radio, for example, it's, it takes a huge budget to get on the billboard charts or to get on terrestrial radio, 
and to, to, to compare. We're already competing with, against ourselves, but now against Justin Bieber and Drake and all of these great Brunos of the world, right? And so the challenge with wanting to reach mainstream success is not having the funding and support that those mainstream companies have and that accessibility. But another good thing is that we're resilient, we're resourceful. We always know, you know, we, again, we weren't every company, we know who to call and we've shown you know, there's her, there's Apple from Black Eyed Peas, there's Darren Chris. you know, so many of these great talents that have reached mainstream success, but most importantly, reach back and see how they can help. You know, we want our talent that are playing at the, 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 the festivals for the community to also shine on the world stage and to be on these major platforms. So I think it's going to take um, the professionals, but it's also going to take our community to, to support one another, even on the ground swelling. Don't wait until they reach, you know, until they exactly. reach a mainstream success. <laughs> or in the Philippines, don't support them until they're successful in the United States, which happens a lot too. Yeah. Exactly. And that is why I know when I was starting the show, people were like, why don't you um, apply to um, do news casting, go, you know, mainstream, go mainstream. And, and, I, and I really took it upon myself to invest in the community because like you, Roslyn, you yeah. know, if we don't invest in our own stories, like no one will take the time to invest in our community stories because yeah. it's too niche or maybe it's not niche enough. But then if we don't spotlight our own, like who will, right? Which reminds me, I know you talked about Inigo and Kiana V. We still have to get them on this program. <laughs> yes, first from her, first make that heart. <laughs> yes, we can make it happen soon. You know, he has a new uh, a song coming out and he has a movie. And, and Kiana, you know, we're gonna announce a big announcement with a, a co-marketing company here in the United States soon. So it's going to be big news and I'd love to get them on. You guys are the gateway. If you, if, if, if these artists and talent and companies weren't featured on your platforms first, it wouldn't open it up to other media outlets to then find them. So mm -hmm. we're so gracious for, for platforms like yourself. And I'm so glad that you continue to, to give back to the community. It's, it's new for me, you know, it's new for me working in the mainstream mm -hmm. for 20 years and then now working um, strictly in my community and it was it was inspired by a trip to the Philippines with the Black Eyed Peas and Joe Coy but you know it, it and it has its own challenges but I feel like it's more rewarding this way you know exactly it's like living living with purpose right yeah. and, and then you're right if people who make it don't give back mm -hmm. I mean who, you need to hold the door open so that yeah there's a stream of people coming in and thank you for doing what you're doing and now this new mixed channel is starting this revolution of promoting and supporting our own. Can you tell us more about this rebranding? Sure. So, so the rebrand really is, you know, uh, Mix is the number one channel music wise in the Philippines. You know that, right? By going there. But when it came to the United States, you know, music wasn't a big part of it. So we're changing that along with the entertainment pillars uh, of uh, music and entertainment. There's lifestyle and there's news and commentary. That's number one. Number two, it, it launched as a pan Asia network, but no, we're, we're, we're doubling down on our community. You know, we, we know our strength. The analogy that we give is we're the Filipino version of BT, meaning that we're investing in our own creators, our own content, our own movies, our own films. Um, and from a Filipino American or Canadian experience where the second generation might have not got to experience that yet, you know, and, and having the, the channel in English with subtitles when it is Tagalog content. So anyone can enjoy whether you're Filipino or not. That's most important. It's not just to reach the mainstream. It's because we know our content and our talent is there for, for mainstream exposure. And, you know, I love when people are discovering, you know, the different artists, the talent, the movies, the love teams, everything special that um, Filipinos have to offer around the world and not just from the Philippines exporting content here, but vice versa. We're, we're creating content um, out here and, and expanding it and, and sharing it across the globe and not just on our cable and satellite, but now through these new digital platforms like Twitch or Kumu or Amazon Prime Video. Right. And I love it, especially when, when you said about uh, supporting each other. I, I, to me, I feel like it, it, it's a hub more than anything, right? It's a platform. We're giving platforms to those with, you know, genuine talent. But then at the same time, it's a hub where Filipinos can go to. It's like we, we um, it can be the go-to for people who want to get to know each other in the, in the community, want to get to know personalities that they can support next, right? Mm -hmm. And so thank you for doing this. We're very excited. Um, 
you are having something in December. And I, and I single this out, it's Filipino Filmmaker Week because Filipino filmmakers are having a moment in Hollywood. Right? Oh man, it was so amazing to be at the drive-in theater and it was packed for Yellow Rose, right? And, and, and Diane, and Leia, and Eva, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, like just to have that film, the first Filipino-led film picked up in so many theaters nationwide, it actually sparked um, an inspiration to shine light on additional filmmakers. So we're working with Charles Gray. He's currently at Character Media. He was also part of Film Creatives, but he's curating a week-long series of short films as well as films created by Filipino Americans, Filipino Canadians, and maybe a couple of, of, of talent from, from outside of the world. But I'm so excited to display this in, in one week and on a big platform like Mix where we have 20 million homes as well as on our digital platforms for everybody to experience it at one time, like how we celebrate you know, our, our music at these different festivals. Now it's our, it's, it's our films, but Again, it's from this this generation. It, our platform is for the second generation of creators, of, of 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 leaders, and you know, collective hustle in the same way as building a community of of leaders. Um, I, I think I love what you said. It so for twenty five years, TFC has not only built this amazing TV network, but the community that. Yeah. you guys have built over the years, you know, everyone thinks of themselves as a part of the TSC community. So the same thing we call our viewers, wherever they're watching us online, social, or following us, they're mixers. So they're, the, they're part of this mixer collective hustle community supporting one another in a Patreon type of sense. You know, one week you might be eating at a restaurant, you're buying Filipino um, clothing or jewelry, and then un undiscovered, and then now you're watching the programs. We're really, you know, utilizing our own community to become brand ambassadors for ourselves and spreading it. Because we're so used to building up all these other platforms for other people, why, why, why not our own? Let's start there. Yeah. Exactly. It's like a big party. And like I said, like a hub where everything is there and we're supporting each other because soon, if we make noise that's loud enough, then they will listen. Then we don't have to go to them, they come to us. And you know what? The noise is loud. When Disney is making their first commercial yes. with a, a parole and a Lola and Blue's Clues is having Lola visit Josh on set, we're making noise, you know? And I think that's, that's the most challenging part, you know, when I first started out was showing our strength in numbers because there was always a question of, well, you, Filipinos are just niche. It's a small community. No, we're not. We're the third biggest, you know, uh, Asian group in, in, in America. We have, we have a, a large household income of expendable income. We pack arenas for Joe Coy and Bruno Mars. We right. voted for Jessica Sanchez on American Idol. So what does that look like moving forward? You know, it's really strengthening um, our, our numbers, getting rid of the crab mentality and everybody moving support, like moving in a supportive way. And yeah, the party is going to be, you can't avoid Filipinos soon on every network, on every movie. You're going to see a character on every show. And I'm so excited because they're all going to come on, on your show and, and also be featured on TFC. But Love yeah, that's the future. It's time, yeah? It's, exactly. you, you've been working for a year, so you understand exactly what we're, what we're trying to do. Exactly. And it's so exciting. We'll end on that note, Rosalind, and you are so inspiring. Thank you so much for all the work that you're doing with our community. More power to you and to Mix. Oh, thank you, Janelle.